a pleasant day to all of you. This is your Prof. Sir Dan. And in this lecture video, we are going to discuss the module on retained earnings and dividends. And the topic is explain the different transactions on retained earnings and different forms of dividends. And our specific lesson for this video is we will explain the different transactions on retained earnings. And the uh, lesson on the different forms of dividends will be explained in the next lecture video. Okay, let us now start our discussion. Retained earnings. It represents the accumulation of profit or losses from the operations of the business. Okay, so this is the account that we are going to use when we are recording profit or losses. Net income, the profit, increases retained earnings, while net losses decrease retained earnings in any given year. Okay? And the retained earnings account, take no class, is credited with the corporation's profit or debited with a loss. Okay? So class... I would like to discuss the other situations that decreases or debit the retained earnings aside from the loss, okay? There are other situations. The first is declaration of dividends. If the corporation will pay dividends, so we will debit retained earnings, okay? And the other one are losses from the reissuance of treasury stocks and on retirement of treasury stocks. From previous discussions, we have learned that uh, treasury stocks uh, may result uh, to losses in, in terms of reissuance and retirement, okay? Okay, class. Uh, next is that a credit balance in retained earnings account. So it means that at the end of the, a certain accounting period, if your retained earnings has a credit balance, then it means that such balance is the accumulated net. So there's a word here, net income, not distributed to stockholders, okay? So if it is a debit balance in retained earnings account, it represents deficit on the company's operations. A company indicates a deficit by listing retained earnings with a negative amount in the stockholders' equity section of the balance sheet. So, plus, the uh, retained earnings will be listed in parentheses when you are presenting the balance sheet if it is a debit balance, okay? Now, class, let us discuss the transactions on retained earnings. So this is our retained earnings account, and we will use the T account to demonstrate the transactions on retained earnings, and our T account is a debit and credit. Okay, the first transaction is this. Net profit from the operations of the business for 2016. So if the company generated a profit uh, for the year 2016, in the amount of 1,800, 1,800,000. So class, if we are going to close, as we have already learned from basic accounting, if we will be closing, and even in the partnership, okay, if we will be closing our income and our expense, okay, we will be using a temporary account called Income and Expense Summary. And after closing Income and Expenses, if the balance of the Income and Expense Summary is credit, it means that the company generated a profit for that particular year. So that credit balance of the Income and Expense Summary will be close to retained earnings because retained earnings is a real account, okay? So this is where the uh, 
or losses or income of the current year or the current reporting period will be closed okay so in this case the company demonstrated or generated an income for 2016 in the amount of 1,800,000 okay and now you will see that we have credited retained earnings so there will be a credit in our retained earnings account by the way class the retained earnings account since it is a real account so its balances is from the start of the business okay and next if the company uh, incurred a loss on 2017 so the income and expense summary will have a debit balance so that debit balance will be close to retained earnings account so in this case we are going to debit the retained earnings account and credit income and expense summary and our assumption is that the loss is three hundred thousand okay and next transaction so there is a debit here of the three hundred thousand uh, to retained earnings account because of the number two entry okay the next transaction if then on 2018 there is again a net profit from the operations okay so in this case the net profit is one million five hundred thousand so we will again debit income and expense summary and credit retained earnings okay so here the retained earnings of 1.5 million will be credited okay now the transaction number four is lost from the reissuance of treasury stocks we will assume that on the reissuance of the treasury stocks you have this entry okay you debit cash okay debit retained earnings so when you debit retained earnings it means it is a loss from treasury stocks and credit treasury stack so in this case this retained earnings of 400,000 will be posted as a debit okay the fifth transaction is lost from the retirement of treasury stocks okay so here our given is that uh, the entry is debit to share capital of 2,600,000 debit to share premium of 300,000 and debit to retain earnings of 100,000 and credit treasury stock so this is an entry for the retirement which we have already discussed from previous slide so in this case there was a debit of 100,000 to retain earnings so that will be one of the transactions of retained earnings okay so here class we have demonstrated uh, the profit or loss and losses from uh, reissuance and retirement of treasury stocks okay if we are going to get the uh, net balance of our retained earnings we will have on the debit side 800,000 and on the credit side 3,300,000 okay so getting the net balance we will have 2.5 million so 3,300,000 minus 800,000 will give you a net balance of 2,500,000 okay in concept class this two million five hundred thousand can be available uh, as dividend to be distributed to shareholders okay assuming that uh, the board declares dividends of one million so uh, we will debit retained earnings of one million and credit dividends payable so this one million will reduce the retained the balance of the retained earnings so the balance now will only be one million five hundred thousand okay so these are the transactions on retained earnings okay class let us move on here class we will be discussing appropriation of retained earnings when we speak of appropriate appropriation it is the transfer of certain amount for a specific purpose from the retained earnings account to restricted retained earnings account okay 
So if there is a specific purpose that the company would like to pursue or to implement on their operations, uh, then they will have to transfer to provide a um, operating uh, fund for that purpose. They will transfer certain amount of the retained earnings to what you call restricted retained earnings account. Retained earnings account can be appropriated or restricted by the following considerations. What are the things that the board or the corporation should consider in restricting a certain amount of retained earnings? First, legal basis for the purchase of treasure stocks. Okay, If the company is planning to purchase treasure stocks, then they can set aside a certain amount of retained earnings for this. Next, contractual. What, what uh, are the examples of contractual consideration for the commitment of the company? What are those commitments? Example, the company needs to pay a loan from the bank. And voluntary. And examples of this are, these are setting aside certain amount for any other specific purpose for internal and external growth opportunities of the company approved by the board. Examples, purchase of equipment. If the company is planning to purchase an equipment that will have a, a material amount of investment or cost to improve the operations or even to construct a building so they can set aside a certain amount from retained earnings. The purpose of appropriation is to guarantee that the corporation's outflow of cash on dividends is restricted while repaying a loan, expanding a plant, or taking on some other costly endeavor. So class, the purpose of the appropriation is that uh, if the, the stockholders see a huge amount of balance from retained earnings, then they will probably demand for a higher dividend. So you are transferring a certain amount so that you can ensure that your obligations as discussed on the above considerations can be undertaken by the corporation, okay? Appropriations does not involve the setting aside of cash. Take note. You are not uh, segregating cash per se. I mean, for that indicated purpose, meaning, uh, for example, you have to purchase a new equipment worth 500000 It does not mean that you will seg segregate 500000 from your cash. Okay? It merely divides appropriations merely divides retained earnings into two parts okay the first part is the appropriated or restricted retained earnings and the uh, other part is the unappropriated or you can also call it unrestricted or free retained earnings or simply retained earnings okay so it means that you are dividing the retained earnings into two accounts. One account is the restricted retained earnings, and the other account is the unrestricted retained earnings. Okay. Okay, class, let us have an illustration on the appropriations on retained earnings. So this, uh, this is the retained earnings account that we have... Uh, uh, illustrated in the previous slide and uh, this retained earnings account is unrestricted okay because this is everything what what the corporation has okay so it has a debit and credit and we have seen uh, based on the examples that we had from previous slide we had this uh, entries in our retained earnings and we have a balance of 2.5 million okay now if the board will see that we have 2.5 million 
That's the reason why the board from previous slide declared a dividend of 1 million because it appears that we have a huge amount of uh, retained earnings, unrestricted retained earnings of 2.5 million. Uh, the uh, purpose of the appropriation is setting aside portion of this to a specific purpose. And let us, based on the uh, discussions on the uh, allowable purposes in uh, appropriating retained earnings, we will have a separate account for the restricted retained earnings, okay? And similarly, okay, uh, the uh, appropriation should be approved by the board, okay? So here, the first situation is that the board approved appropriation of retained earning for the purchase of treasury shares for 800000 So they are appropriating. Out of the unrestricted, they will now transfer 800000 to restricted retained earnings. So the entry is that retained earnings, we will be reducing this. 800,000 and now we are transferring 800,000 to appropriated or restricted retained earnings and we are it is best that your entry since that it is not uh, frequent that you will have this uh, transfer it is best that you will uh, specifically name your entry to the specific purpose okay and like in this case, appropriated retained earnings for treasury shares. So we will now reduce uh, retained earnings by 800000 and then transfer that to the restricted retained earnings. Okay? And uh, another consideration that the corp company can consider in the appropriation is this. Board approved appropriation of retained earning for the repayment of loan of 500000 So here we will remove uh, 500000 from the uh, unrestricted and credit the uh, restricted retained earnings of the same amount. Okay? And the other allowable consideration is this. Board approve appropriation of retained earning for the purchase of equipment for the new project of 300000 Okay, so we will debit retained earnings. We will remove it from the $2.5 amounting 300000 and credit appropriated retained earning for equipment. Okay, so with this, our balances are now our retained earnings unrestricted only has 900,000 balance because the difference of uh, 1,600,000 was transferred to restricted, okay? Plus, now, if you are showing or if the corporation is showing a 900,000 balance, then the board can no longer declare a dividend of 1 million, okay? And in most cases, of course, they still have to make sure that uh, there is uh, a leftover balance on the unrestricted. So um, the board will only declare a dividend lower than 900000 Okay. So basically, uh, to protect the operations of the corporation, the company is restricting portion of the retained earnings. Okay so that uh, it will not be seen as uh, available fund to be distributed to the uh, shareholders, okay? If you want to uh, pursue certain projects for the internal and external growth of the company. So class, take note, dividends should only be declared out of the unrestricted retained earnings, out of this, not including this, because it is already set aside for a specific purpose. Okay, uh, by the way, uh, when will this be available? That it will be the question. Well, well, when will this restricted retained earnings will be available? Then the appropriations can be reversed 
if the purpose is completed or will no longer be pursued or implemented. Meaning that if you have already, uh, because it, as I have said uh, in the previous slide, it is only setting aside the retained earnings but not the cash. So the, the operations will still continue. So in the event that uh, the corporation has already purchased uh, treasury stocks, then um, there can be a reversal of this entry. Okay, so to close it, you just have to debit appropriate and retain earnings and put back the 800000 Okay? Okay, class. That's it for this time. And let us again have a discussion uh, in the next lecture video. But for now, stay safe and have a nice day.